Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and I am attempting at some point in the near future to be building a battle bot and one of the main things about a battle bot is having some way to power it on and power it off. Now, most people will use either a switch or a link for this and I've done a video describing kind of the benefits of both uh, which I'll put in the description down below. But today uh, I'm going to be looking at switches because the most commonly used switch in battle bots is a Wayachi switch, uh, which is a screw switch made by Team Wayachi. They are apparently quite reliable uh, and quite good. I mean, they were designed and built specifically for combat robots. However, uh, there are two things wrong with those for me, or not wrong, but just make them a little bit problematic for me. They are quite pricey, uh, and they're an American product, which means it's very, very hard for me to get them here to Australia. Not only are shipping really expensive, but lead times are a massive, massive pain. Now, obviously, taking a robot to BattleBots, I could get Wyarchi switches there and uh, solder them into the robot then and there, but that's leaving things really, really too late. If I want to do any form of testing in Australia, I need some way to power up the robot here and now. And that is what we're going to do today. We're going to look at trying to build a prototype Wyarchi switch, or at least a prototype BattleBot switch, something capable of handling massive current. And that is where these things come in. And what I have here is uh, some switches. Now, I got these off eBay. These are commonly sold as battery interruption switches or boat switches. They claim to be able to take 300 amps at, I think, 48 volts. However, uh, these are a very cheaply made product. So the marketing around them is uh, all over the place. Some of them you'll find, say, 100 amps. Some of them you'll find, say, 300 amps. They're various different voltage ratings, a whole lot of stuff. Now, the way these work is they have a key at the top here. You turn the key. When the key pops out, uh, the switch is off. When you put the key in, push down and turn, then the switch is on. And basically this whole top section is completely superfluous because we don't want a big plastic switch in a battle bot. So uh, this one here, I have already cut the top off and what you can see is a copper plate. Now this copper plate is sprung up towards this top section and then there are two copper bolts in underneath. So when you push down on the sprung plate, it makes contact with the copper bolts, creating a circuit between them. So uh, basically what I want to do is rehome all of this and then rather than having this key lock situation at the top, I want to put a captive nut here and then I use a screw to push down on this copper plate. But to do all of that, uh, we're gonna need to bust into this thing. Now it looks to me like the only thing holding the top onto this is these two brass rivets here. So we should just be able to drill these out and then we'll have a look at what's inside. Let's release this slowly and hope that the spring doesn't just destroy everything. That no, looks like we are. All good. Yeah, okay, cool. So, here we go. We have a copper plate, a spring, and two copper bolts in there. Now, this is actually a little bit disappointing, to be perfectly honest, uh, because I was really, really hoping that these had been silvered, because copper itself is really quite nice and quite conductive. However, uh, if you run a silver plating over top of your copper or a gold plating over top of your copper, you get better conductivity. And I was kind of hoping that that had been done, but unfortunately it hasn't been done. I guess maybe some of these will be, um, and I'll have to have a look for those because those will be better for us. But there you go. This is what we get out of it. We get our copper bar, a nice stolid spring, and some copper bolts, which... It's a good start. It's definitely a good start. So I'm going to CAD some stuff up uh, and then we're going to print out some parts. Here are the parts fresh off the printer. So this is version one and I honestly don't expect it to work very well. Also, I don't have all of the required parts around me, but uh, what you can see here is we have two halves. These get bolted together. There's four M3 bolts. Those might not be strong enough. I might need to buff those out, uh, but we'll see how this all goes together when we put the spring in. But 
so we've got two halves. We've got the bottom half and the top half. We'll have a look at the bottom half first because I actually have the components around me to do this. So first of all, I've got a hole down the center here, which is actually a notch for this spring. And that, oh, that sits in there pretty nicely. It's a little bit loose, but that should be okay. And then you'll see that around the edge of here too, there's also some divots and those divots should allow for this circular piece to lock on in down where it's supposed to be, which I'm not sure how well that's coming off, but that basically forces the left to right or the this way uh, angle of that in place. So that is now pretty good. And then we've got the holes out the bottom for the bolt. So much like in these full things, we're gonna have the bolts coming out the bottom uh, and that's just gonna do that. Okay, so those bolts are pretty well seated uh, and they can't really, can't really turn in there too much. So we should be able to just tighten nuts down on those pretty easily. So there's not much to this. And if you look up in the top here, and it might be a little bit hard for the camera to see it, but there is actually a hex printed right into the bottom. And this should just be a press fit for this nut, uh, which is all that's really keeping it in. Oh no, <laughs> that's gone in far too easily. Let's just, oh, it hasn't come out. Damn, that is not what we wanted to see. But I, yeah, I mean, like I said, this is the first prototype. I was not expecting it to come out cleanly and yeah we need a better way of securing that probably a better press fit or maybe something else to hold it in place uh, but so now we've got our two bolts in here let's see if we still make full contact squish oh hang on what's that's not good i am pushing down as hard as i can but this plastic section i think is hitting something Ah, oh, the spring's crushing in underneath it. All right, well, maybe we try without that. Uh, we've got a bump in the bottom of the, the spring. It does mean that the spring is now electrically conductive to the plate, but oh, ah, I'm trying to push this down by hand and showing you this on camera is quite difficult, uh, but we can now get the plate all the way into contact with uh, both things without that. So that's okay. All right, so let's do that. We've got the captive nut, which is kind of mostly captive. This isn't really gonna work very well because the second you put any force down from the outside, it's actually just gonna uh, disconnect from there. So like I can just like, boop. And there we go, one screw switch. Uh, so the good news first, it seems like the M3 bolts are actually gonna be totally fine for this because I've literally just uh, screwed them into slightly undersized holes in the bottom section and it's holding back the spring force fine. Like, and it's difficult to try and pull apart. So that's okay. And especially if we have slightly longer M3 nuts and run um, nylocks at the bottom, this is gonna to be totally perfect a solution for uh, holding this whole thing together. It should be totally fine. And it's not gonna to get too much shock load, I don't think, uh, because it should be mounted on a flexible plate and everything should be a-okay. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a good thing for sure. Uh, we can certainly push the bolt down and get connection, I think. Uh, I haven't really tried screwing it together because it's kind of hard. You need to keep the whole bolt as far this way as possible while trying to screw it in that way, which is not great, uh, but lessons to be learned. So I think if we can fix that, uh, and I've got a small change I want to do to the spring section because I'd like to put this piece back in. And the thing that was stopping that was when the spring was there and it was there, the spring uh, didn't have any place to kind of like compress in on itself. So I think I can add a little section in underneath there, which might help it. I mean, I will say in this version, the spring actually sits out much, much lower than uh, where the bolts came through. So yeah, by having a flat bottom on here, I'm compressing the spring way more than was ever uh, compressed here. All right. 
Time for attempt two, this time with a whole extra part. Uh, so this is actually going to be our locking plate that locks the nut in down uh, where it's supposed to sit. So we've got this little section that basically when the thing's closed, this piece is gonna be sandwiched between the two halves and hopefully hold everything in place. Uh, we can pull this main one apart. It shouldn't be too, too difficult because the screws really aren't holding it together super, super well. Um, oh, that screw is just spinning in place. That's gonna be an issue to take out again. Also, the hex nut down the bottom here, uh, we have got a slightly tighter push fit on it. It's still, oh, actually, okay. It didn't come out that time, uh, but it's still just a very loose push fit. So pushing a bolt without the retaining clip on it uh, should probably, uh, I would say anyway, uh, should actually make it um, yeah, push out all the way back out again. So that's now all done up. That's fit together quite nicely. All right, let's see if we can get this guy fully together. Which way around are we going? That way. And I'll be right back as I, again, attempt to wrestle with the screws. All right, there we go. Neat, tidy little box. And the ultimate test, can we actually screw in the, uh, the screw out the back here all the way. Oh, good, we're hitting the nylock. That's a good sign. Uh, we push through that. Can we get down far enough? Okay, I guess actually what I should do before I go too far with any of this is hook up the multimeter and so we can tell if this thing actually makes contact at any point here because it should, in theory, uh, make contact when those plates go through. So. All right, multimeter is on. It will make an annoying beeping noise if we make contact. Uh, so let's give this thing a screw down. Oh wow, this is a long way up. Oh, and there it is, ha ha. Oh, and I've separated the plastic at the back here. Uh, this is not, oh, hang on. That's an annoying noise, back off. There we go, sweet. Okay, so we actually have a proper screw switch now. Uh, we've screwed this a long, long way down in though, but if we screw this a couple more turns, there we go, screw switch, and deactivated, perfect. Uh, but of course, yeah, it, I'm getting this cracking at the back where the pressure of this screw is actually more than the combined pressure of those because this one's in a nylock nut and those ones are just threaded into plastic. So yes, they would need to be nylocked in themselves Oh, damn. Oh, damn, I've just realized I can make this whole section shorter because of course I can, because what I've done, I put a little clip here to hold the nut in place. What I should have done is just move the nut up further. Ah. All right, so third time's the charm. We've actually got a slightly smaller part this time because we have the nuts basically sticking all the way out the top. If I can get this in, it should just be a, oh, that's a nice, that's a tighter press fit. That's good. So you almost be able to see there's just a little bit of a lip there, which means that the nut is actually gonna to be touching on the press bar when everything is closed up. And that's actually kind of good because that means that the bar is going to keep the nut in place properly. And then when you screw a bolt through it, the bolt is going to be touching the press bar and that is going to put pressure on the nut and keep the nut in place. So I didn't actually need this little retainer piece. I could have just used the stuff that was already involved uh, and we would have been totally fine. So there you go. Uh, but that's why I do prototyping so that I can work all of these things out and done. This is actually looking nice and compact. I think the next thing we need to work out though is does it actually work? Uh, so we'll connect everything up. Uh, it should be in an off position right now. So if we turn on the multimeter, nothing is happening. Then in we go. Getting some resistance. There we go. Nice, half a turn. Yeah. 
There we go, that's exactly what I wanted to see. That's perfect. Uh, I'm still getting a little bit of splitting, but now because the thing is smaller, I can actually just get easily get uh, nuts onto these M3 bolts. So that would mean that this would be a lot better as a system than it was before. Ah, oh, this, is, this is good, I like this a lot. Uh, turn it back, yep. All right, let's half a turn back. Okay, so we're now at an off position, but can we... Good, good, okay. That's what we wanted to see. Uh, uh, I kind of want to do the same shake test with it on, but what we're going to do is we're going to turn it off the make sound mode because that's just going to be real painful and annoying. Okay, so that is connected, and if I shake that, it stays connected. Sweet, that is what we wanted to see. So there you go. That there is a working prototype of a heavyweight switch. This thing should be able to take up to 300 amps at uh, 24 or 48 volts, which is considerable. It should uh, do us very, very, very well. Um, yeah. I am very keen for this actually. Uh, so I now need to go through and uh, just kind of polish the design up a little bit so that it can be ready for CNCing, but uh, all of that we're gonna have to do at a later date, probably in a completely different video. Uh, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.